Elon Musk and Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal are both reportedly seeking to reschedule their depositions in that lawsuit over Musk's $44 billion buyout. Well, former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti joins us with more on this. So what do we know about the reasons someone would typically do this at this stage of a, of a case? Well, I, I think it's there's no question that Mr. Musk is not eager to get deposed. He wants to delay as long as possible until he gets more information, more discovery from the other side, because the more discovery he has, the more he can tailor his testimony to the discovery that they see in here. Uh, I do think it, it does look a lot like Mr. Musk is trying to um, get out of the sale because, frankly, the market turned against him. And as a result, he's really looking to find any evidence he can to try to give himself some leverage in negotiations with Twitter. And we know that there are a number of um, subpoenas have been issued for depositions, including for Larry Ellison, Jack Dorsey, of course. Do, what do we have any sort of, of the fruits of some of these depositions that have come out so far? Yeah, I think right now, I think what we've what we've seen so far publicly, at the very least, uh, is that Twitter actually did provide a lot of data to Mr. Musk, uh, which is a problem for him because he's claiming, of course, that there was a lack of information provided to him. He's also making a claim based on a, uh, a bot website that a very high percentage of Twitter users are bots. Uh, unfortunately for Mr. Musk, even the owner of that site indicates that their data, that their analysis is not exactly accurate, something that couldn't be relied upon. You know, Mr. Musk is also, I think, relying a lot on some claims that, uh, uh, that were made uh, by Twitter in an SEC filing, which of course are heavily caveated. So. I think thus far, you know, a lot of the a lot of the testimony is as you would expect. Um, and the question I think rem remains is whether or not uh, there's going to be specific performance ordered by the court, which would which would force Mr. Musk to purchase Twitter, even though at this point he doesn't want to do so. Now, we know that Elon Musk did waive due diligence. How much of what is happening outside of that, though, is perhaps covered? Like, does due diligence essentially rule out the fact, rule out whether or not Musk will succeed in this case? It, it really makes it an uphill battle for Mr. Musk. Uh, waiving due diligence is something I would not ordinarily uh, counsel a client to do. And when you do that, uh, it's really hard after the fact mm -hmm. to make claims after you signed an agreement to purchase mm -hmm. to say there's more information mm -hmm. I you, need, I even though I waive due diligence, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to kill the deal over that. Very, very difficult claim. One, one that I don't think most lawyers uh, would like to be making. So in terms of the path forward here, in terms of success on Twitter's side or success on Elon Musk's side, what sort of options do they have ahead of them? I really believe that both sides are going to ultimately settle this case. It's just going to take some time. You know, Elon Musk has every incentive to try to fight. He has every incentive to try to delay, which is maybe why we saw this recent news that he's trying to delay his deposition, because the longer he delays, the more he can convince Twitter that this is a sideshow. It's distracting its company. Uh, you know, it's it's potentially uh, not allowing them to move on towards other potential goals that they have. Uh, you know, on the Twitter side, Twitter's doing what you would expect a company to do when it has shareholders that have, you know, have consummated a deal to make a lot of money over their current share price. Right. So, you know, Twitter is trying to swiftly bring this to consummate the deal and require specific performance. Musk is trying to drag it out. I think eventually there's going to be a settlement here. And we know that, of course, we had the Twitter whistleblower in front of going in front of lawmakers. How much did that shift the needle? And what, if anything, could shift the needle going forward in this case? I do think it did shift the needle just because it, you know, up until then, really, everything was going Twitter's way here. I think it did give Mr. Musk uh, something to um, grab onto. Uh, you know, I think, it, you know, in his mind, you know, he, he decided at a certain point he didn't want to buy Twitter. Um, and his lawyers are trying to search for some misrepresentation that Twitter made that they can hook on to. I think the, the whistleblower did help. Um, but I think, you know, I think going forward, um, 
there's I, I I still think Musk is in a difficult position. Ultimately, there's a reason why Musk wants to delay. Uh, obviously, partly because it gives him more leverage, but I think also there's a hope that another whistleblower will come forward or something else will come out. The, the more he has to work with before he locks himself in to what his reasons are for not wanting to consummate the purchase, the better. So between now and the October court date, what are you keeping an eye on? Sure. Well, I think I'm really keeping an eye on Mr. Musk's Twitter feed. Uh, it's not a it's not a coincidence that Mr. Musk uh, had his own tweets referenced in the filing from Twitter. Uh, there's no question that he has uh, done things that most litigants wouldn't do. So I'm always interested to see what you know admissions he's going to make, what statements he's going to make. Uh, definitely, he's much much re- must read Twitter, so to speak. Um, so I, I will be keeping an eye on that, but I'm also going to really see and keep an eye on what, you know, who is deposed, what revelations do get, you know, publicly told about what is coming out of those depositions. And I think, you know, I'm also going to be interested to see whether or not, you know, for example, you know, Twitter, you know, t- Twitter makes any filings uh, publicly that are going to say anything re- relevant to the facts that that ultimately are in dispute here related to the bot issue. We know all this drama is certainly not helping Twitter's share price, at least. A big thank you, former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti. Thank you for your time this afternoon.